Sports Club LA in West Los Angeles, the best club to work out in all of Southern California. My guest today is a three-time NBA champion with the Los Angeles Lakers. He played 14 seasons in the NBA. As a coach, he was honored Coach of the Year in 2007-2008 for coaching the New Orleans Hornets. Now currently the coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Byron Scott, welcome to Who's Huge in Sports. Thank you, I appreciate it. Byron, you had an incredible run with the Lakers. You spent 10 years with the team. You played along legendary players like Magic Johnson, James Worthy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. It, it was amazing to me to see that you actually led the team in scoring during your championship run of 87-88. What, what was that like? Well, it was an unbelievable run, uh, unbelievable season. I, I think the fact that I led the team in scoring is based on the fact that we had so many great players on mm -hmm. that team. And, and we had so many teams that had to try to figure out how to take one of those guys away uh, that it kind of left me free, you know, to kind of do my thing. And, uh, you know, having Magic, who's, you know, the, the, one of the greatest players that ever played the, right. played the game and probably the greatest point guard that ever played the game, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, feeding you the ball. Uh, and, and basically all you had to do is catch and shoot or catch it and lay it up or catch it and dunk it. So, it was, you know, it made my job pretty easy. Yeah, that must have been something, really. And um, so now, when you're um, when you're looking back at your career, mm -hmm. you know a lot of guys who play in the NBA. They'll look back and they'll reminisce about their accomplishments. But you got right into coaching. Um, do you ever take time to reflect on the accomplishments you made as a player? I always take time. You know, and there's a lot of times, especially when I'm back home in Los Angeles, I get a chance to see Irvin, uh, or Coop, or James, or somebody mm -hmm. like that. We always kind of reminisce about the back, about the good old days, and. and the one thing that we all came to a conclusion about is the fact that during that 10 year span, we probably should have had two more championships. Mm -hmm, right. You know, so, uh, you know, we reminisce about the good times, about the type of team that we had. Uh, and we always uh, look back and say, man, the, the, the type of talent that we had there, you mm -hmm. just don't see that in the NBA anymore. You don't see the type of teams that we had. Uh, and we, all, we always wonder if we were playing today, you know, how would these teams stack up against us? Yeah. I think pretty good. <laughs> you know, when I think about it in my head, I think pretty good. So then, you know, you, you got into coaching pretty quickly after right. your career. You right. a couple of years in Sacramento as an mm -hmm. assistant, and then you got your first head coaching job with New Jersey. And in only your second season, you took the New Jersey Nets to the NBA Finals. And you did it two years in a row. And I, I just want my audience to understand this, okay? He took the New Jersey Nets. And now this is a <laughs> franchise that has done nothing in the NBA. You, you helped them win their first Atlantic Division crown and then got them to the final two years in a row. I mean, that is such an incredible accomplishment. I don't think people realize how difficult that is to do. And, and then you lost the championship to the legendary Hall of Famers to be like Kobe Bryant, Shaquille mm -hmm. O'Neal, and then the next year you lost to uh, Tim Duncan and company. Right, right. So that, that must have been a tough thing. And then you know to see them let you go after only your fourth season, that, you know, I think that they made a mistake. And letting you go that early. Well, you know what? It's a business, and you mm -hmm. understand that when you first get into it. A good old friend of mine, Bill Walton, who mm -hmm. I think you probably know pretty well, sure. told me coaches are hired to be fired. That's, <laughs> that's, that's exactly what he told me when I took my first job. And there were so many people who told me not to take that job. Really? Uh, they said it was the Clippers of the East. Hmm. And, you know, you wasn't going to win there. You know, you just don't want that. And to me, that's a challenge. Oh, yes. you know, that was a big time challenge. So I was looking forward to the opportunity to get my first chance to coach uh, and, and really put my blueprint on a basketball team, which I had the opportunity to do my second year. And luckily for us, we went to the finals my second and third mm -hmm. year. And the fourth year, they, they decided to go in a different direction. Right. So, uh, you know, I have no regrets about it whatsoever. Uh, Rob Thorne, the general manager, is still a very good friend of mm -hmm. mine. We still talk. He's yeah. the general manager in Philly now. Uh, I just look at it as, as another stepping stone to sure. another job and another opportunity. Well, you know, that's a, you sort of set the pattern there because your next job in New Orleans, you sort of did the same thing. You know, yeah. you took this young team, the first year they struggled a little and then turned it around, record 56 wins with New Orleans when you won Coach of the Year. I mean, those are some major accomplishments right there. And, you know, the things you've done with some of these young players is th these guys are standing out now in the league from the things you did there. Um, when I heard that you took the job in Cleveland mm -hmm. before LeBron James made the decision, mm -hmm. I knew right then and there that Cleveland had a very smart owner, okay, and they were now on the right track to success because the type of integrity and the hard work that you show and the determination that you put into your coaching is going to reflect in this team now, and, and I think it was a great move by them. Well, you know what, I, I think it was mutual. I, I thought that 
the organization in Cleveland is fantastic. Dan Gilbert, the owner, is unbelievable. Uh, getting a chance to work with Chris Graham, who is now the general manager of the team. Mm -hmm. Uh, and having no idea at that particular time, when, when I took the job, if LeBron was staying or going, uh, I, I really felt that I was in a good place either way. You know, if he stays, we got right. a team that can win a championship. If he goes, uh, we got a young team that's got to, you know, kind of rebuild and start over. Right. Uh, and, and obviously, the, 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 the latter of the two, you know, I've done that two other times, so I had no problem doing that. So uh, either way, I felt pretty good about the situation. And then once he made his decision, uh, I moved on right away because right. I had no emotional ties to LeBron whatsoever. I really didn't. I really don't know the young man, uh, and all I could do then is wish him all the best and just try to get this young team that we have in right. Cleveland uh, started on the right path. And I think right now we're heading in the right direction. I mean, it's a great challenge, you know. And I and I just thought that you were the right guy for the job, and you had the right kind of energy. And having been a player, you knew how to relate to these guys. And mm -hmm. and now you know you have whenever the season gets going again, yeah, you got two yeah. great young players to, to lead you off with. Um, talking about athletes and other players, you know, one of the big things for my show, what my fans want to know is Byron Scott. Who's huge in sports? I think Kobe Bryant. You know, and, and I might be a little biased. I'm, you know, I still, I, I still bleed a little purple and gold. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. uh, it will probably always will. Uh, but Kobe's a, a young man that I came in this when I was in this league, and he came into the league. His rookie year uh, was my last year in Los Angeles, so I got a chance to know Kobe extremely well. Mm -hmm. And I think the way he's uh, elevated his game and the revolution of his game has been unbelievable. And to me, to this day, he's still the, the, the best closer in basketball. He's, he's the one guy in this league that wants the ball right. in, in the, in, when the game is on the line, and no matter what the, you know, the situation is. Uh, and there's a lot, of, a lot of guys that don't want the ball. He's not afraid yeah. to be the GOAT, and he's not afraid to be the hero. And, and that's the one thing that I admire about him the most, uh, along with the way that he works. Sure. You know, he, he outworks you know, so many people, and he doesn't have to because he's such a talented basketball player. But I think he's still... Uh, he, he's still big time in, in my eyes. Absolutely. I mean, good call. I mean, certainly, you know, playing in the Michael Jordan era, mm -hmm. you know, and everyone always wants to say Michael was the greatest ever and you want to see who was, who's going to be like Mike. And mm -hmm. I think if, if you want to give a comparison, the only person who ever come close to looking anything like that is Kobe. Yeah. And Kobe has his own incredible resume on his own. Uh, Kobe has been an incredible player. Every time in the playoffs I ever doubted him in a situation, thought, you know, they were down two games to none in a series or down to Dallas, that I always thought that this guy would come back and he always proved yeah. it. Of yeah. course, this year he didn't have enough supporting cast to do it, but over the course of his career, Kobe has been incredible. Um, now, you know, you and I met here at the sports club, right, right. which is great, a couple years ago. And, you know, I like to get out there. I like to shoot a little. I got the lefty J working for me. And, you know, I just want to say here that I was fortunate enough to one time be in a pickup game with you. You know, there was a bunch of other guys. I think there was maybe Mitchell Butler was in the game and he was guarding you. But, um, you know, it's one thing to watch from the stands to see you drain those three-pointers. But it was another thing to be on the court with you, sort of under the basket. I see those rainbow bombs dropping <laughs> in. I was like, wow. And then I think there was even a play once where I got switched off and had to pick you up on defense. And for about 10 seconds there, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Luckily, you passed off, and then we switched back, so it was fine. But do you, you still like to get out there and play? You still like to run, run with the guys and the, do some half-court ball? Yeah, I still, I still love that. You know, I'm still a competitor. I still uh, enjoy the game. Uh, I, if, I, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be coaching. Right. You know? and, okay. Um, you know, that's, that's the thing about basketball. That's my love. That's my first love. And it's something that I'll always love. I, and I'll probably play half court and all that stuff until I can't play no more. Uh, right. I'll probably shoot, you know, just like I do with a lot of my guys with Cleveland. You know, mm -hmm. We have shooting games, and I enter those shooting games. And, you know, so that's just something that I've always done. Yeah. And I, I've always told myself, as long as I can get up and down the floor a little bit and, you know, can still shoot it, that's something that I'm going to continue to do, and I enjoy doing that. Yeah, and I don't doubt that. The last time I saw you, Jay, the form's still looking good. It's still there. I, and I, you, still, I can yeah. still drain it. And you're still in pretty good shape. Still in pretty good looking shape. Looking good. You know, I, I, you know, you, you know, you're there every day as well. Yeah. I just, you know, love the workout, and, uh, you know, I do it because I love to do it. Right. You know, just like I coach because I love to coach. That's awesome. Now, now, when you're there at the club, you know, you got your earbuds in. Right. What's, what, what do you listen to? What, what's on your iPod? <laughs> You know what? Everything's on my iPod. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that can't 
can't work out without listening to something that's upbeat. Whereas mm -hmm. me, I got Ozzy Brothers, Temptations, okay. uh, Spinners, uh, OJ. The old school, then, huh? Oh, yeah. And then right. you hear some Lil Wayne, you hear some uh -huh. Jay-Z, some Eminem. Okay. Uh, then Anita Baker, Joe right. Albright, Jeffrey Osborne. You, I, I'm all over, the, all over the map when it comes to music. And, and I just like to let it play because okay. you know, it doesn't matter what's playing as far as I'm concerned when, it, when I'm working out. As long as it's good music, mm -hmm. you know, it puts me in a good place, and I can work out to anything. So uh, I got everything on my on, on my own. But the only thing I don't think I have is uh, is the blues. Okay, I think everything else is pretty much on there. Is that what genre though? Would you say you really you know attracted to most? What what's it? What it mostly R and B. Mm -hmm. Mostly R and B. Um, you know, like I said, Anita Baker is uh, okay. one of my favorites, and I, and I love contemporary jazz. You know, Paul Taylor, Jerry Albright, uh, Nige. You know, mm -hmm. Kenny G. You okay. Know, I mean, I just, like I said, I'm all over the place when it comes to music. Okay. And what about um, uh, films, sports films? You a big movie guy? What, what's your favorite sports movie? I love movies. Uh, my wife and I had a ritual back in the day when I played grade where we would go to a movie every night before a game. So mm -hmm. we had a game ah. on Friday night, we would go to the movies every Thursday. Wow. You know, so no matter what night that game fell on, we had, we had a ritual of going. To, it, it's something that relaxes me. It's something that kind of gets me away from basketball for a little while. Uh, famous sports movies that I love. I love Hoosiers. Oh yeah. Uh, you know I'm a big Denzel fan, so uh -huh. I remember the Titans. Right. It is a movie that I love. I love Al Pacino. So any given Sunday is okay. a movie that I love. And it nice. doesn't always have to be basketball related. It's right. Just right. A, it's just a storyline that, that kind of attracts me to it as well. But uh, those three, I would have to say, are three of my most uh, famous or favorite movies okay. that I really enjoy watching. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, yeah, well, this has been great. You know, it's really great to have you um, as a guest on the show. Um, you know, good luck to you when, whenever this lockout is lifted. I know you've got a great young team to get back to. Um, I know that off the court, you've done a lot of great things with your Byron Scott Children's Fund, you. your charity, and um, continued great success with that. And good luck with the Cleveland Cavaliers, and thanks for joining us. Great, my pleasure. Anytime. Thanks. For Who's Huge in Sports, I'm Greg Miller.